Previously on Nerd Punches Nerd. Of course, my my favorite Alan Rickman line from that movie is like when he's at the like opening of, of like the, the whatever that store is, right? <laughs> yes, and they're Grab like, Star's they're like, they're like yeah. <laughs> by Grab Star's hammer, what a savings. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Nerd Punches Nerd, the only podcast where a bunch of nerds pretend to physically fight over minor pop culture minutia. I'm Jeremy here with Benji and Sam, and uh, how you doing, fellas? How you doing? <laughs> so, good, good. in honor of Deadpool, we are going to discuss our favorite breaking of the fourth wall. The fourth wall. And as everyone knows, that kind of means when you're breaking the line of reality between the characters and the audience. And there's a billion examples. So I think we all have some fun stuff. All right, so let's start with Sam. What do you got? Okay, um, so my, my favorite instance of Breaking the Fourth Wall um, is from Robin Hood and Tights. Um, nice. We all know Mel, Mel Brooks... Mel Brooks loves to break the fourth wall. Um, so in the in the very beginning of the movie, there's this scene where, like they do the credits and there's like um, people shooting like flaming arrows and they're like setting fire to these <laughs> huts which with thatched roofs and the the people in the town are saying, um, uh, "This is not from memory. This is me reading a summary that that has the exact quotations." It says something <laughs> like, uh, "There must be a better better way of doing the credits." And somebody else says, "That's right. Every time they." make a Robin Hood movie, they burn our village down. And then, like... <laughs> yeah. And then at the end, like, after the credits are done, you see, like, a whole crowd of people in the alley yell, Leave us alone, Mel Brooks! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you have, like... So, is, do, you have, do you have, like, a number two? Oh, yes. My number two is also from that same movie at the end. Um, <laughs> when they decide that, um... When, you know, after, like, they've, they've defeated... The Sheriff of Nottingham and, and Patrick Rottingham. Stewart. Rottingham. Yes, yeah. Rottingham. Excuse me. Um, and Patrick Stewart, a.k.a. King Richard, has come back and all of that. Um, they decide to make Dave Chappelle. He's like, I'm going to make Dave Chappelle the new... Uh, his, his character's name is... A, a sneeze? A chew. A chew. A chew. Oh, I thought right, it was a chew. No, uh, his father uh, was a sneeze. Right, right. And he's a chew. So they're like, a chew, you will be the new Sheriff of Rottingham. And he's, he's like, a black sheriff? Worked in Blazing Saddles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, all right, Bench, what do you got? So I don't know if I have, like, a favorite. There's just too many to choose from. But I have a few things that are that are noticeable to or notable to me. So, I mean, probably in, all, like, all throughout Annie Hall, like, Woody Allen is awesome with it. This is hilarious. I don't have a particular instance that I remember. But does um, he break the fourth wall, or does he just talk to the audience? Isn't that that's breaking the fourth wall? Well, talking directly to the audience is breaking the fourth wall, isn't yes. it? Sort of, and that's just supposed to narrate. If it is just a substitution for narration, it's not really breaking the fourth wall. But if, but I, I mean, it's kind okay, of like a subset. It's like a subset, I guess. But well, I don't really would you say that it. like a Shakespearean soliloquy is breaking the fourth wall? Mm. I mean, that, that's like the classic example. Well, that's that's where it's sort of like again, that's like eh, not exactly. Whereas there are definitely like if someone, it definitely happens in Shakespeare plays where they kind where occasionally they talk about it is that it is a play. Well, well Jeremy, I studied the theater, and um, and I it's it's pretty it's pretty explicit. I'm pretty sure like when I uh um I learned about it that that like the official definition is when you address the audience. Um, and the, the 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 main action of the play is is a um it, it, it like you're breaking from the main action of the play to actually talk to the audience. So okay, uh, but I think you're sure. I, 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 no, listen, listen. I don't think every soliloquy is breaking the fourth wall, but in Shakespearean in the Shakespeare's plays, there are times where people address the audience, like at the be often at the beginning and the end. You know what I mean? And well, I think right. that's the cl- some of the classic examples. In so I think it has nice to do with dream, the ending speech where Puck basically says, hey, sorry, you know, this was all just, like, you know, fake. I think right. that I think that would count as breaking the fourth wall. Okay. Okay. But, sure, okay. 
So Andy Hall, Woody Allen in general, classic okay. Jew haters. Um, <laughs> classic Jew haters. Um, and I guess it doesn't work. I was going to also point out um, Howard Stern in Private Parts. I think he does that a lot during it. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess I could count that, yeah. But he narrates during it, so... I, I, just, I just remember... I wouldn't say it's no, the he, best I've ever seen. He does break like, the fourth ball in that movie. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I remember... I remember some fond moments with it. Um, and that's and really then, your favorite? Oh, okay. I, I don't really have a favorite. Like, I couldn't really think of it in time. All right, I just, well... I, I, so I don't rather. know. But... but but there's one, there's one here that I, I would like to be my favorite. I haven't seen it. It says on this website about breaking the fourth wall that you sent us, Journey. Yeah. It says, in the middle of Justin Bieber's documentary concert film, Never Say Never, the singer and Jaden Smith break the fourth wall by telling the audience to pay attention to the film and to stop making out in the back row of the cinema. So I'll put that down as my favorite. Yeah. Breaking that, of the fourth wall. Yeah. Excellent choice. Yeah, that doesn't count. <laughs> Docu- I, come on, you can't break that. the fourth wall of a documentary like that. Okay. Well, not according, to, you're wrong according to tvtropes.org, and you sent that. So I guess you're wrong by association, and everything you say for the rest of the podcast is wrong by definition, by default. So, disqual- in the words of David Bowie and Zoolander, disqualified. All right, so, I mean, listen, you know, obviously the Mel Brooks stuff, he does that kind of stuff in all his movies. You know, similarly, you know, Monty Python has a zillion of them. You know, they're all, you know, there's so many that I, I can't really just say, oh, well, what about that one? You know, there's just so many. But if I can pick I, of specifically of movie stuff that aren't like part of a general, okay, these are all comedy things like that. I think Austin Powers in the second movie, when they try to explain time travel, is a pretty good one. He's like, I think it will work better if you just stop thinking about it and just enjoy yourself. And that goes for all of you out there, too. <laughs> I think my second favorite is in the Muppets, I think the Muppet movie, where they he's like, wait, so what's how it's supposed to happen next? And they all get out a copy of the script to look at what it is. Like, oh, yeah, I guess so. we are supposed to have like a sing-along here or whatever it was. Uh, which, which one is that from? The Muppet movie. The, the first, first one? one? Yes, the first one. When they meet up with um, Electric Mayhem. Right. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I always I always crack up at that. Uh, but my number one, Breaking the Fourth Wall, is actually from The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> which also oh, right. which is a, a very interesting Breaking the Fourth Wall because at some points he like interacts in a sentence with like the book itself. Like, yeah, you know, the the wind, like the wind blows the words around and sometimes he talks to the narrator. Uh, but my favorite part, the most egregious of all the breaking the fourth walls in that movie is when Tigger gets stuck in the tree. So he slides down by tilting the book to the side so he can <laughs> slide down. It's like, it's just like, what the? It's just, it's just so brilliant and so stupid. Those, but I love it. Those Winnie the Pooh movies are pretty trippy. Well, yeah. that's true. The whole Heffalumps and Woozles thing. Is oh, my God. Heffalumps and Woozles is, is, like, I still have nightmares about that. <laughs> yeah. Man, these early cartoons are the trip. Like, I don't think cartoons do in the same... I mean, like, kids' cartoons don't do it in the same amount of trippiness anymore. Yeah, some do, mm-hmm. but, you know. Okay. I think I think you're right that the mainstream ones don't really do that the kind of way they right. do. But... I mean, because, I, mean, cause, I mean, as we all know, the Pink Elephant's on parade in Dumbo. Was, well, that was, like, like their cute. third movie. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like really trippy. <laughs> um, all right, so that that gets us primed up to talk about Deadpool. This is what we are all yeah. here to talk about. We've all, all seen right. the movie. Now, on a scale of one to pool, um, <laughs> what what do we got? What do we all think? Uh, what do you guys Dead. think? Dead. Oh. <laughs> oh, jokes! I got I got all kinds of jokes in the chamber tonight. All right, awesome. So overall, positive. What do you think? I mean, I, I mean, think yeah, I, I'd it. say overwhelmingly positive. I don't know what you guys think. Well, let's get... uh, yes, I, I also agree. Um, overwhelmingly positive. Now, I'd like to just ask you sort of an interesting comparison question. Now, okay. I kind of had to remind Mr. Benjomi is here that 20th Century Fox is the one who produced this movie. And they've, and as far as mm-hmm. I'm concerned, they really only made one other really good movie, which is X-Men First Class. 
But and X2 is what you mean to say. And no, X2. X2 does not hold up, but we can, whatever. Well, and, and Days of Future Past. Half of Days of the Future Past. So, yeah, one and a half. But they also have three terrible Fantastic Four movies and right. at least two terrible X-Men movies. Origins Wolverine and uh, X3. I guess right. the, the Wolverine was, was not bad. So, do you think among all the Fox movies, is it the best of them? Or, yes. Or one of the X-Men's are better? What do you mm. think? Well, I, I would say it's the best. Because mm. for also, me, also, and, it would only... I, I, it's it's tricky because X Men First Class had some individual acting moments from like Fassbender and McAvoy and Jennifer Lawrence to a to a lesser extent that were better than in Deadpool. On the other hand, I think I enjoyed myself more at Deadpool. I would say just just overall Deadpool, just because in terms of being a, as complete as it was of, of a movie and things like that. I mean, it's just I don't know if they've come up with anything else that's been as solid. Um, wait, did, did Fox do Spider-Man? No, that was Sony. But I, I haven't gotten to... That was going to be... I was going to have, like, a follow-up question. But... Uh-huh. So, Sam, what do you think? I, I... Well, I did really enjoy Deadpool. I think I still would have to say that um, Days of First Past. Class was probably better. Mm-hmm. Although it's... They're very different movies. It's very different. Them, but, but, um, but I think I would, I would put First Class ahead of Deadpool. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's okay to be that. misguided in your life. Like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, like, these, these are okay things. You know, some Listen, you've got to find a way. You know, we can't all be right all the time. Right, right? clearly. I mean, <laughs> you guys are demonstrating the point. Is that, I mean, a lot of this has to do with, to me, like, love of material. You know, Deadpool, you know, Ryan yeah. Reynolds loves the character. That You can tell the writers and the director really love the character. Mm-hmm. Brian Singer has never loved the X-Men. He just likes the metaphor. You know, and I don't think he ever really got it. I mean, don't forget, like, in the first movie, it's like, what do you expect, yellow spandex? And what did we get in Deadpool? Someone wearing yellow spandex. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. guess what? It looked fine. It didn't look weird. Now, yeah, we've been prepped by, you know, Avengers stuff, but come on. They were just being dicks about it. I mean, also, also, I mean, that was, the the, the first X-Men movie, like, that was kind of the beginning when they were starting of of the, um, of, like, the resurgence of, like, that era of superheroes. First Class also went back to those, like, bright yellow uniforms. Brian Singer didn't direct that. I'm not, yeah, but I thought we were talking about whether First Class was. was Oh, well, right. That's, I think you're right in that First Class has a lot of better feel. You know, because it's in they they were in like the '60s you know era, you know they were I felt I guess I felt more comfortable, you know, showing off a little bit more color in their movie, and I enjoyed that a lot. Right. You know, it's more comic booky. Right. Which is something that feels like they've been afraid to do in a lot of their other movies. Now this next one though, Age of Apocalypse. I mean, that Psylocke costume basically looks like the comic book costume. And I'm so pumped for that. I hope that movie's good. So, it's Brian Singer's last movie, so I also hope it's his best movie that he did. Because I feel yeah. like, after Usual Suspects, he's never had a really great movie. So, Brian Singer is that. doing that one? It's not Matthew Vaughn? I'm, I'm no. so confused. He only did Because they first seem class. to, like, go back and forth a lot no, so he on only did, X-Men movies. He only did First Class. He wrote a lot of... Uh, so, Brian Singer did past. Days of Future Past? He directed it. He directed but it. But Matthew Vaughn... Contributed a lot to the screenplay, which huh. he also did to First Class. But huh. then Matthew Vaughn went on to direct Kingsman, which is actually a pretty great movie. I don't think you guys yeah, saw right. it, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, 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 I didn't see it. Yeah, you know, a recommended movie, but whatever. It's not hardly a priority. Go on. You saying the point is? The point is that we're just talking about Matthew Vaughn. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, you know, Brian Singer. He said that this is going to be his last X Men movie. Okay. So. You know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm hoping to have more interesting stuff. And he doesn't pull a Joss Whedon uh, with Avengers 2? No, (laughs) that's that's unfair. You know, Joss Whedon was was really burnt out. Of course, of course. No, listen, listen, listen. I'm not not really... I actually... No, 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 you're right. Fair enough. I actually have no animus towards Joss Whedon for that because he's, he's like, pretty much God and all that. Um, But, like... Um... All right, well, yeah, I, I I hope so too. I mean, I guess I guess that sucks. I mean, if he's, I see what you're saying about him not being being really an X Men fan and all that. Like, 
like I don't think he ever and so, so that, that would, would, would make it possibly unfortunate with Apocalypse because that's someone really to nerd out about I mean I nerd out about Apocalypse well hopefully he's, he's getting like better input from you know writers about it you know which maybe he is considering it's a very weird property so hopefully they're getting a little something I, I hope so my worry is just that like Avengers 2, it might just be too big to be good. Uh-huh. You know? I mean, like, we're comparing it yeah. to Daredevil. Uh, not to Daredevil, to, uh, to Deadpool. And um, I think part of the brilliance of getting back to Deadpool, part of the brilliance of Deadpool is how small it is. You know, how few characters it has and how fairly straightforward the story is. And that that's, like, really a strength of that movie. And I think that, like, the bigger you get, the harder it is to make a good movie. You know, you have more yeah. characters and more plot. And, like, you know, more stuff going on, and, like, more villains, and, you know, and, like, yeah. and at a certain point, it just gets to be, like, too much, and then you end up with something like, you know, the second Avengers movie, which which wasn't a bad movie, but it, like, wasn't really good either. There, there are far, there are far, like, wor- exa- oh, there are certainly. examples of far worse things that try to be too big. I mean, Aven- Avengers 2 was by no means, like, a piece of shit. It just, no, it that's, just and that's not what I'm saying, but, like, but yeah. Avengers 2 is a movie that was made by very competent people and had, like, very right. competent actors. Like, the people who were making it and in it knew what they were doing and had, right. like, proven themselves before, and it still was, like, you know, kind of a mess and kind of disappointing because, right. like, I think it was just, you know... I mean, they'd, they'd set something for themselves that just was ultimately impossible. I think that's I, true. I the pro- but the- let's, we don't, let's not get into a whole complaining about Avengers 2 here because we could talk for a long time about <laughs> that as well. But okay, the, let's the, complain the, about Deadpool instead. Well, the, mm-hmm. the, the follow-up, though, is actually a, a relevant question, which is, how does it compare to all the other comic book movies? And let's just start by Marvel only, because if we have to start getting to DC, that's another matter. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, compare it to all the other Marvel. So, the you know, Spider-Man's 1 through 3, and then Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. We can already get rid of those two, obviously. And Spider-Man 3. So there's Spider-Man right. 1, Spider-Man 2, and then you have the Captain America's, Iron Man's, Thor's, the two's Avengers. Well, remember, Spider-Man's not Marvel. I mean, I guess technically it's Marvel. No, I'm saying right. okay. okay. the Marvel. You're just saying for the universe. Okay, yeah, yeah, not exactly. the idea. Right, so you're, just, exactly. like, you're talking like strictly Marvel, not DC. Right, because I'm just trying to think, like, how do we compare? Because we've already said Deadpool's either the top or in the top two of specifically the, the 20th Century Fox movies. I- so, I mean, I I would argue it's like honestly, I would argue it's in the top three of, of of any of the comic book movies that have come out, and I'm not I'm not I'm not exaggerating that. I mean, maybe if I I've only seen it once now, mm-hmm. so maybe if I saw it a second time, I think differently. But but it's like I'd say pretty much the top three are Guardians of the Galaxy, Dark Knight, and Deadpool by now. I mean, maybe Avengers in a certain way because because it's just it's just got so much going on and, and creating this whole universe. But um, but I mean that honestly that is how I feel. About what do you think, it. Sam? Do you think it's uh, already belongs in that top echelon? I I would put it not quite that high. I think it it ranks about number five for me in Marvel movies. Like okay. if my top five were let's say like, um, Avengers, Guardians, mm-hmm. um, Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. X Men First Class, and then I'd probably put Deadpool after those four. Yeah, well, I mean, all right, so it's interesting. And, so and Spider-Man 2, I guess, should be in there somewhere, but I'm not, it's been a long time since I've seen it, so I'm not quite sure, like, yeah. where I would I'll, place it. Right, well, all right, well, let's think about this part of it, because you know, Betty already brought up The Dark Knight. Uh, I mean, I think Batman Begins is also really great, but is there any other really great DC movie? I mean... I'm yeah, I don't think there are, besides for those two, I don't think there's really any other contenders that you know, that would that would break into that, you know, top five or so list. Right. I feel like I feel like I saw something recently that there is something that has to do with these. Oh well I mean maybe I mean like I mean I feel like Suicide Squad they're trying something with that and maybe that could help them break well, out of I think they're trying to copy Guardians of the Galaxy, but that doesn't yeah. mean it will it could still be good. Yeah, you know, and listen, squad, I, 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 I'm pretty confident Jared Leto can pull off a great Joker. I agree, and Will Smith looks like he's having some fun. So, yeah. you know, I yeah. prefer fun Will Smith to... And I mean, I guess there are, the, there are the Hellboy movies. Those are DC, right? Oh, I guess. I, I don't really... I mean, no, no, so I guess, but I guess they do certainly count as comic book movies. 
So if you want to put it that perspective, if you think, I like the first Hellboy, I do not like the second Hellboy. Mm -hmm. But I think, for me, it's funny because the first, I don't want to go get into a whole thing here, but I think the a lot of the first Hellboy movie holds up really well, but then a lot of the empty action isn't quite as interesting, but whatever. So... You know, I wouldn't. I mean, I I wouldn't necessarily put either Hellboy movie up in, up there in the top five. I think I think we can safely say, or at least I would say, that Deadpool is better than each of those movies. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to toss them out there as like, you know, somewhat underrated DC movies that sure. are not that. I mean, you know, obviously we had our whole thing about like the giant podcast that we did, you know, years ago about comic book movies. Right. And that was before. Yeah. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy came out, and before I think even the Avengers came out, maybe. Was it? Maybe. Maybe was it, it was. Before the Avengers came out. Maybe. No, I think. No, I don't I think, think it was. We, no, you're right. It was. No, right but Jeremy, because Jeremy, remember, before we started this podcast, you and I did a little podcast thing, yeah. um, about about Avengers. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I think it's interesting because you know I I'd be hard pressed to think of another great one in that you know the top echelon there's a lot of, a lot of crappy ones just yeah. so many so many bad ones i mean oh by the way i didn't include in the marvel universe too that i think also jessica jones is like up there with just being incredible yeah, like that's one of the best marvel things as a show i'm just i'm just saying like that's i would i would put the tv shows in like a different category yeah yeah because like then you're gonna have to start talking about like cartoons and you know there's like all kind of stuff so, so we should just stick to movies. Yeah, like, because, you know, I mean, sure, Dread, the, the new recent Dread movie was pretty good. Uh, what was that was other it? one? Yeah, Sin City, the first one. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is kind of based on a comic book. You know, there's a lot of little it things is. like that. It is. Yeah. It is based on a comic book. Uh, yeah, so, those, you know, there's definitely good stuff out there, but I think we were really thinking of, you know, the mainstream comics. And I think among them, you know, Deadpool is, you know, I, it's, it's up there. I really had a good so, time. So, yeah, so so Benji and I have given our, our rankings, you know, approximate rankings. Where where do you place it right, on so the I, list of, uh, you know, it's like top comic book movies of all time? Well, I got to put Dark Knight at number one. Mm-hmm. And I think Guardians go, Guardians goes after that, then, then Captain America 2, and then Deadpool, and then First Class. I guess I don't see what, uh, like uh, your guys' thing about Captain America. We don't have to talk about this for a while, but... Really, Jerry? But why did Captain you, you put both um, Deadpool and, uh, and and X-Men First Class above Avengers? Yes. Okay. Listen... That's a I, I controversial Captain, opinion. <laughs> I, know, listen, I like the Avengers. My, my wife but, is calling from the other room. I agree. But I, I actually... <laughs> remember when we listened to the commentary? That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that more than I like watching the movie the first time because it was just so well, interesting. He had such a fun commentary. It was a good commentary. But, but oh, that's, that I, I yeah, do, I, I don't, I don't understand the, the Captain the Captain America thing. I mean, like I thought it was really good. I, I I just I guess I think of it as like a a better like a a better action movie, like it's just a better version of action movie. Like it's like I feel like it's like maybe slightly below Avengers. I, like, I kind of have a feel about it. Because I, I thought there were some kind of weak parts with it, especially the, the villain or whoever, the, the, the guy was his old friend and stuff. Yeah, I really yeah. thought that was very clever. And there are weak parts in everything. But, you know, don't forget, once you start... Not Deadpool, Jeremy. Once you rewatch The Dark Knight for the seventh time, you start seeing all those plot holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true. No, I've, I've, I've had many plot holes pointed out to me about The Dark Knight. Everything has plot holes. Of course it does, but... I don't yeah. even think I paid attention to plot holes until the third time I saw that movie. Right. So whatever, yeah. you know. Well, that's that's the mark of a good movie if like it can suck you into the point where you just like completely don't notice the plot holes even watching yeah. it the second time, yeah. the third time. All right. Yeah. So let's get into Deadpool itself. You know. All right. Do, should we do a spoiler warning? Uh, yes, <laughs> we're right. going to spoil a uh, Deadpool, of course. The entire thing, including yeah. including including the entire thing from front to finish, post credits. All right, yeah. so let's talk about the first thing, which is who here knows what the credit scene at the very end was referencing? Oh, it was yeah. Ferris Bueller, right? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously. I, I actually, someone pointed that out to me. I didn't. I didn't realize that. I didn't, oh no, yeah. I. 
<laughs> I knew. I knew right away. <laughs> it was well. The thing is, because it looked, it was made up. I'm exactly, not like you old folks, you know. I don't remember. Uh, whatever. I didn't. Yeah. Sorry for being old. I didn't see Ferris Bueller when it came out in the theater. But no, you know, but like even if you watch Ferris Bueller on TV, they have that scene. Yeah, they they, they include that scene at the end when when you watch it on TV. Right, and he was wearing a robe. That's why yeah. Deadpool was wearing a robe over his costume. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but I don't want to get into what he said because. You know, I just think that's interesting. Now, here's my question. Uh, the DMX song, X Gonna Give It To You. Right. Do you think, why do you think they use that? Do you think that they actually use that just because it sounded cool or because it has the letter X in it? Oh, I definitely think it was intentional with the X, that they yeah. were, like, trying to reference X-Men. And totally fit with the feel of the of the movie, too. Right, so, so. well, speaking of the X-Men, what do you guys think of how the X-Men were portrayed in this movie? Um, I think, well, I, I kind of, I'm kind of conflicted about it because like on the one hand it felt kind of weird and like sort of cheap that like, you know, there's only like two X-Men and they're both like kind of minor X-Men and like you don't see any other X-Men, but then they kind of joked about it and made reference right. to it. Yeah. And it's, in a it's way, weird how the, how the, the, the other, like the other side of it is that like in a way it's too. kind of appropriate because like it's just hard to imagine Deadpool and Charles Xavier like having a conversation with each other, right? <laughs> Would like, Charles Xavier be able to like read Deadpool's mind if he's breaking the fourth wall? That's an interesting oh, thing. Oh right? well, that's an interesting question because I think the 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 canonical ways of talking about Deadpool is either he really is aware that it's a comic book, or he's going crazy, or he is <laughs> crazy, and that's why he thinks he's in a comic book. Those are the right. two ways to interpret it. What does it matter because the ex- I mean, I know, it's a fun thing to think about, but the experience of us is that he's talking to us anyway. Yeah, well, um, right. So maybe Xavier would think he's just crazy. Right, right, right. Well, in any case, I'm just saying, like, it's it's just hard to, like, picture Deadpool, like, interacting with, like, the X-Men in, like, a more serious way. Like, especially the way that the, the X-Men generally are depicted in the movies, which is, like, you know, fairly, like, serious and, and like, you know, straight-laced. Right. And, like, yeah. you know, it's sort of, like, I think they, had, like, the way that they presented Colossus was a little bit exaggerated in terms of his, like, you know, Boy Scout, like, goody two shoes right. sort of personality, which they were doing, like, very intentionally, sure. um, you know, as a contrast to Deadpool. But, um, but, and but I think... Because he had, like, a, he had, he had, like, a, a protege. I feel like that was also part of the reason he was doing that. But yeah, go ahead. Right. No, sure. but I, but I mean, I, kind of ultimately, I would say that I did like it. Um, I like that there were X Men. I like that they had Colossus. Like we, you know, I like Colossus. He's a good character, and like we and haven't this is seen him. Only time and, like, he's been done well. And and yes, yes, yeah. he was done well. Um, like I said, the personality is like a little bit exaggerated and like you know sort of over the top, but like still, it was good. And um, I really liked Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Um, <laughs> I I actually I recognized the name, but oh, you don't I, remember? I didn't. I recognized the name, but I couldn't remember who the character was, so I had to, like, look her up afterwards. Okay, do you remember um, She was created by Grant Morrison. Correct. Right? And she was a very, very minor character. Like, she oh, barely did minor. anything. I could tell um, you exactly where she showed up. In the very first issue, uh, when Genosha gets destroyed, you know, the island of mutants. Right. Uh, Emma Frost is teaching a class of telepaths, and then this one girl who looks very gothy and weird-looking says, like, Listen, I know you guys don't believe me, but we're all about to die. And then everything blows up. Right. And then later, when Emma has already turned into Diamond and the other X-Men have come to try to get any any survivors, you know, Emma comes over and says, you know, please help her. Her name was Negasonic Teenage Warhead. She picked the name herself. Yeah. Mm. And it's sort of like kind of amusing, but also kind of sad because she just died. Right. So it's sort of, you know, that's like a Grant Morrison thing. And then, of course, Joss Whedon used her again in his run on Astonishing X Men when Emma Frost goes crazy and, you know, there's a bunch of different telepaths around. And it turns out they're all fake. One of them was Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Joss Whedon got to make fun of the name a little bit as well. You know, so Kitty's like, ugh, I can't believe they're letting anyone come up with the. Their own, you know, their own name these days. <laughs> right. So yeah. obviously, she's so, just a so telepath. She's, a, she's so, supposed to be a telepath. Not they, as apparently, they gave her the powers of a different mutant whose name is Cannonball. 
right. um, well, who they had originally yeah, planned to be in the movie and then they cut yeah. him and whatever. Um, but the point is, she also really worked as a character, both like having a ridiculous name and also being the like yeah. sort of like you know like dour like gothy teenage <laughs> character oh, who like oh, 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 got oh, to like play movie. off. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a different off? type of foil for him to play off of yes, than, right. like, than Colossus like, was. Because it's like, you know, if you think of, if you think of every character as, an, as a different aspect of the personality of the protagonist, then, like, she, she does represent him because, you know, he, he kind of likes her, you know, like, that's, that's the whole thing, because she, she's, like, a dick, and she's, like, you know, um, she doesn't really care. You can tell she doesn't really care about rules stuff. Maybe she's not as disrespectful to Colossus. Like, maybe she's... It seems like she respected Colossus. It didn't seem like she was, like, disrespectful to him, but she was kind of like a, a no-bullshit, you know, like, teenager. No, I don't think she's really a no-bullshit character. She's, like, she's a no teenager. It's all, it's no, like, no, 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 that's what I mean. She's, yeah, like, right. she's, like, she's, it's all an act, and I think that he likes the act. Yeah, like yeah. Like, that, right. because, like, that's what he is. He's, he's just, like, yeah. putting up an act. It's all performance. Well, that's the whole thing. Actually, this, so, okay, wait, there, 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 there are a couple things I want to mention. The first... First, to sort of like answer the question we were talking about, like the treatment of Colossus, speaks to a larger issue that I was thinking about while you guys were talking, which is, I mean, this this was, movie was very popular. It did really well, and and I think with good, a good reason. It would be interesting to see if this actually affects the rest of the universe in an interesting way. If people kind of respect it, like will will this? I don't want to say cheapen, but will this have people take other things less seriously in the Marvel universe? Um, I don't think it necessarily will. But I think they sort of run that risk, even, even though it's awesome. Um, well, I because... think that was that was part of the reason that the movie hasn't been made until now. Aside from the fact that they were just afraid, like, oh, you know, it's going to bomb, or nobody will want to watch it, or whatever. I think they were afraid that, like, this will, like, cheapen the X-Men product, or, like, make people, like, mm -hmm. sort of, like, look at it, you know, in, in like, a, a more, like, you know, mocking sort of way. Right. Um, I guess that's probably why it's good they didn't have... Um... They didn't have other X Men in there. Well, I think kind of, I think that's also part of the reason well, that they didn't yeah. want to have the bigger X Men characters. Is they were like, it's if he just like mocks movie. everything, they're like that's like, gonna like, like taint yes, our brand somehow. I got I got to tell you, a lot of this was a budget thing. The movie only cost about fifty million to make, which is I know it sounds like a lot, but for superhero movies, it's actually not, and it already yeah. made three times that. That's a great yeah. return on investment. But yeah. So. A couple of things about that. I mean, they tried to get Wolverine to do a cameo, but they couldn't get him. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, it was a lot of it was, can we get this character? No. Can we get this character? No. And then someone said, like, well, what about Negasonic Teenage Warhead? And apparently the guy was like, who? Yeah. So they're like, <laughs> yeah, her. So, <laughs> right, awesome. exactly. So that's yeah. a, whoever said it, you know, was, you know I, think, I think it was one of the, who was the director. You know, that's a guy who has some real deep knowledge of X Men. You know, cause he, cool. well, you're he's talking about a character who only appeared in like three issues ever, right? She's like yeah. <laughs> very, very, very obscure. Yeah. So I, I really admired that. And when I, when they first introduced her, I'm like, oh my god, I cannot believe it. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And of course, he yeah. treated it correctly with his like, that's the best name I've ever heard. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> that was perfect. So, like, can we so trade I guess, names? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so, I mean, speaking of names, one of my favorite parts of the movie when he was like, yes, I'll be Captain Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's like, he's like Deadpool. Yeah, Cap Captain Deadpool. <laughs> uh, no, let's just, let's just keep it at Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing about him, too, is that he was also so Ryan Reynolds through the whole thing. That, that was yeah, a great thing. It, too. Like, it, really, it really worked. It was a superhero well, for Ryan Reynolds. Thing. That's, what I've, been, that's yeah. what I've been saying for like a long time. Ever since Ryan Reynolds played Deadpool like horribly in, um, in that X-Men movie. Not in his X, fault. In, in, not his fault, but, um, but in, in Wolverine Origins. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah, X-Men Origins um, Wolverine, yes. And, and you know, I mean, I said a long time ago, like, the irony of that movie is that, like, Ryan Reynolds actually would make a good Deadpool. And it turns out that I was right. He did make a good Deadpool. Well, you know, he pushed like, to be in that role. That's why he was... Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I know. He pushed for it. And then, I yeah. <laughs> like, at the end when he's, like, saying to Inara, he's like, he's like, <laughs> you should see what they did to me. They did to me down there. Super penis. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, speaking speaking of Anara, um, 
Because I also, I, I had seen the trailer, but I just didn't, like, put it together that oh. it was Marka Bakarin. Of course not. Oh, really? Um, and then I was watching the movie, and I was like, wait a second, that's, that's a, that's Marine Bakarin, that's an Ara. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's yes. Awesome. Always awesome. I think she's gonna look amazing until she's 100. I think she's that type of person. Yeah. Yeah, well, obviously she still looks very good, but, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, she's an actress and stuff, but, but, uh, but honestly, she looks, like, maybe only, I mean, she still looks great, I'm not even saying she looks, like, 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 worse now, whatever, but she looks, like, slightly different than she, she did in Firefly. She's just, Oh, yeah, yeah. no, I mean... Yeah, and that Nathan was like, Fillion like, looks much worse. Well, yeah, Which, most of them do. They all they all look older. Yeah. yeah but, well, you know. well I, I actually I want to I want to discuss something actually kind of about that point, but towards the end of the podcast, so let's put a flag in that because I actually want to I actually want to mention something about that about like how she looks and all that stuff. But uh, all right. let's get back. All right. To it. Wait. Um. So oh, wait. Oh, okay. Ben, you go ahead. Well, I, okay. I, I was going to open up um a, a point about sort of an anal- an analysis I had about kind of a thematic thing. Um, but I didn't know if there's also you guys want to talk about, because I, I had a, I want to see if you guys agreed with my analysis. All right. Be- before we get into the thematic stuff, um, can we, can we have another round of Sam's Complaint Corner? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ne- Jeremy, what? cue the music. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me see if I can find <laughs> that. <laughs> my favorite part of the show. <laughs> well, listen, I mean. <laughs> it's, it is a tradition. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I it's didn't a, have It's to... a fan favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Well, <laughs> it's like right, so, so like some people are listening to the podcast and like you know the parents are listening and then Sam's <laughs> complaint corner starts and like they're like they're like Audrey Sam's complaint corner. <laughs> All right, I got it. Do you hear that? No, no, All play right. it again. All right, so now it's time for Sam's complaint corner. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Let me just remind you. It's um, it's time for. Uh... Sam's complaint corner. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of the podcast. All right. Awesome. So time time for Sam's complaint corner. Um, so I have I do have a complaint about Deadpool. Um, and um, this was kind of brought up a little bit by us talking about um, Ryan McCarr and her character's name is Vanessa, I think. Right, yes, Vanessa. That's correct. Um, so my complaint is that while this movie was awesome in many ways, um, I thought that even though it had a lot of female, relatively a lot of female characters this is in it, I was gonna make for sure, yeah. the female characters are relatively underused and like kind of really like disappointing in a way. I mean, you have um, you have Vanessa, who's a love interest. She's she's cool, she's fun, but she doesn't really do anything in the movie. You have Angel Dust who, like, barely even has any lines. I think she barely speaks in the entire movie. Yeah, but it's uh, Gina by, Carano. So... Played by Gina Carano, who, who did a very good job of, like, physical acting and, like, having, like, a physical presence and, like, being threatening, which is awesome. But she barely, like, said anything or, or did anything other than just, like... That was the right you know, decision for that car- for that actress. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. So maybe, maybe Gina Carano can't act. But the point is, that was disappointing. Then you have you have um, Al. What's her name? Blind Al. What do they call her? Yes. Yeah, she was awesome. I have no complaints about her whatsoever. Um, I really and... miss cocaine, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who was like a fun character, but like you know really wasn't in the movie very much and, and like didn't do much also. So that is my my major complaint about this movie is that I wish that, like, the women, and it, it's, I mean, it's great that they had, like, four different women who were prominent in the movie, but I wish that they had actually, like, been, like, more important, done more things, you know, just been more active, yeah, but um, and had, like, yeah, you know, taken, right. like, a more a more active role in the movie, um, um, rather so than, than just being, right. so that's, that's my, my complaint, um, this has been Sam's Complaint Corner. <laughs> Jerry, uh, cue the music. <laughs> Listen, Sam. <laughs> I and, think, um, yeah, okay, go ahead. Please respond. I think you're, you know, you're right in general about that, you know? Um, Complaint accepted! <laughs> but, that being said, I think I have to make the same point that I kind of made about Star Wars, which is that, you know, there's an aspect of it which derives success from being more mainstream, in a sense. And I think that it's harder to take risks in certain sense, like they were already taking so many risks mm-hmm. that I think maybe you know they weren't ready to just like 
Oh, fine, you apologist scum. Change things up entirely. But, I, I mean, like, listen, you know, it's sort of interesting, like, I feel like there were probably things that could have been tweaked a little bit better with some of that stuff. Like, I thought Vanessa was pretty good in the beginning of the movie. Like, they, they, the way that they progressed the relationship was very good. Yeah. Like it was amusing. Yeah. No, the, the romance also, was good. And that's, I never thought that was something I would say about a Deadpool movie. The romance was good. It was. <laughs> well, that's the point. I think it's the way, the way they made it. I think, I think that's the way they made it accessible and the way they really made it like an interesting, complex movie that it, it, the genre is a love story or this one of the genres. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so I think, I think that's, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of what, what made it work really well. Um, I mean, I, I, so I was going to make this point at the end, but this, I feel like, segues nicely into, into the point I was going to make. And I'm going to use this word, which I kind of hate myself for using because I don't like it when people would just bring this up as, <laughs> in general, but I kind of feel like it fits. There were some problematic elements oh, here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, but I... I <laughs> you use that word. You use could, the P word. I, 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 I have to point this out because... Because it's something I felt I felt pretty pretty strongly about when I saw it. Now I mostly I don't think the movie's problematic or anything like that. But the fact that he at the end can look however he wants, and she I mean I have no problem with Anara looking like Anara. I mean that's I I personally have no problem with that, obviously. But she looks preserved completely. She wasn't damaged at all by the by being in that in that in that tube. Not that you should, but but he's kind of like he's all fucked up and stuff. Now, obviously, I mean that's the way it happened in the plot, so whatever. I mean that that's just how it happened. But I, I feel like I feel like it's kind of like I, sometimes I feel like with the writers of certain things, I feel like you know they're like living out their their fantasies of certain uh, of certain things. So like I guess just the idea that like the guy can look. Go ahead. Uh, no, please continue. I'm just like scoffing because i don't think it's at all <laughs> relevant uh please finish your thoughts it was my one i listen I, I put the movie up there in the top three of uh of of uh of marvel movies so i'm not complaining about the movie but I, but it was something that pointed out to me just this idea that that like he 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 could look really shitty and all that and she was like pretty much okay with it but i feel like the audience would not i, I mean, part of it is i feel like the audience would not have liked it if she if she looked like shitty in it. Because I, I kind of thought they were going to go in that direction, like kind of the Shrek direction, um, in a certain sense. You know? Mm-hmm. If you, if you know what I mean. So I, I, I felt like I was like, eh, I, I, I don't I, I don't want to say the message of it is wrong or anything like that, but I kind of feel like it's it's this, it's this like, I don't know, kind of unrealistic wish fulfillment thing. Okay. I, I hear what you're saying about, like, you know, the, the Shrek ending. Um... I think, I mean, like, obviously, the reason she didn't look like that is because, for one, he was, like, tortured for weeks, and she, you know, wasn't. And I, do we even know if she was injected with the, the mutant serum? No. Nope. Did, did Ajax say that nope. he injected her? He didn't. Like, we thought that maybe he did, but... No, 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 no. All he um, did, he put her my, in that thing. My wife is saying he said he didn't. No, so, no. So, so, he, yeah, he was just going to kill her. Um, the point was he put her in that but, thing to, but, like, torture her. Right, exactly. But also, even aside from that, even if he had, like, turned her into a mutant, um, most of the people that go through that mutation process don't end up with, like, weird, messed up skin like Deadpool. Most of them end up still looking normal. No, he did that. She, he ended up with the messed up skin because, he, like, he put him in that special tube. Right. And, like, sort of accelerated the torture process, essentially. You know? Yeah. Okay. And because... Well, but anyway, regardless... Moving, moving away from, like, the, the specific, you know, um, practical, like, plot-based explanation right. um, to the more, like, thematic explanation, um, I, Benji, I think, I think you have a fair point. Um, also, knowing a little bit about the character in the comics, the character, Vanessa's character, um, she is a mutant in the comics, and I think she looks weird in the comics, and, like, she might, like, in the next yeah. movie, might, like gain mutant powers and also have her appearance change at some point to be more more true to the comic book um character but um but also i mean like in a way like like you like you were saying the movie's already taking a lot of risks and like maybe maybe that was like one one step too far that they weren't willing to do maybe they should have i mean shrek 
came out a long time ago. I, I think people would be like comfortable with that kind of stuff by now. But yeah, but I okay. I, I, that I, I guess sell, I had it. But the idea, yeah. but I don't think there's any true, you know, rel, you know, feeling that this is wish fulfillment. Because okay, maybe maybe I'm choosing the wrong the wrong word with it. I I, I sometimes have an issue, and maybe it's a personal thing, but I I just just an issue of mine. But I, I I do sometimes have an, have an issue sometimes in movies and TV when they when they when they get like certain I feel like they get certain aspects of like human dynamics or relationships like kind of wild you know like like I guess um I don't say wildly wildly wrong but it's just like I I'm trying to think how to say this um it it just it just kind of felt like um it it, it was more like the the like I don't say the idea behind because I don't know if they were I don't think they were trying to push an idea or anything like that but uh, but I'm just saying is like we're okay with the fact that I mean the whole point is we're okay with the fact that he doesn't he looks shitty at, at the end but but I don't I, I don't Does think he, he doesn't I, look that bad yeah I I call it the Dinklage effect you know oh yeah in Game yeah. of Thrones you know uh, Tyrion's nose gets cut off and in the show they give him a oh. a, a friendly scar. And they even have like a little. I think he's quite fetching with that scar, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think. Well, in the books, yes. they said that to him. And you're <laughs> you're totally right, Jeremy, because like he yeah. his he he even even with whatever prosthetics they gave him and makeup and stuff, like he doesn't look that bad. Right. In the movie. I I, I think people are capable of handle. I think that's part of it too. I think people are capable of handling people looking subpar or something like that. I, there, there, there's just something there I feel like is just, like, imbalanced. Well, I mean, so. I'm being very nitpicky. Like, I, 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 I was and satisfied let me, with... Let me ask you this, so. Benji. Based yeah. on the portrayal of their relationship in the movie, if, like, if Vanessa had gotten, like, all, like, horribly scarred and had her, like, skin messed up and looked ugly, like, do you think that, like, Deadpool would, like, no longer have loved her? No, I think he would have stayed with her. I think yeah, he would have. Exactly. Yeah. So I, yeah. so I guess that's a point. Yeah, I, mean, I guess that's a point. This is, this is something that's been around. Let me give you an, another example. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever read Harry Potter, but in the <laughs> in the end of the sixth book, which I know Benji did not read, and it was done so poorly in the movie that I'm sure he doesn't know what I'm referencing, uh, Bill Weasley gets attacked. I did, I did read Half-Blood Prince. Bill Weasley gets attacked by a werewolf while he's a human and gets his face scratched up. And then, you know, Molly Weasley, his... Molly's like, I guess Fleur, you're not going to be interested anymore because he's not as attractive. He's like, oh, I would be attractive enough for both of us. Eh? Well, well, maybe. Oh, oh, oh. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, exact uh, very, quote. Very accurate. Exact quote. My point is, well, you, though, know, you, know what's, you know what's wrong about the whole thing? You know what's wrong about the whole thing? The fact that you said I didn't fucking read The Half-Blood Prince, which I did. That's the one with the pensive, right? Yes. All right, fine. Ah, uh, lick my it. balls, Jeremy. Thank lick my did. balls. Okay, fine. So you read that one. <laughs> All right. But that doesn't and mean... I read the last two and the first one in Half the Chamber of Secrets. All right. And little bits and pieces of Goblet of Fire. Okay. <laughs> so I'm an expert. The point is, it's, it's a similar kind of concept. It's like, it's been around, that kind of thing, about the, you know, the beautiful woman being able to accept the not-as-attractive guy. I think... Well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's very old. I think I it's think. a trope. So yeah. I think you, there is something there. For sure. Yeah, but, but, Sam, but Sam, you did bring up a but, good point. I do think I do think that character would have been fine with with Vanessa. Like he clearly wanted Vanessa. That was that was the whole point that he yeah. wanted Vanessa. Like you know, um. So I think he would be okay with it. And also, you know, they they did they did mention it wasn't like she totally was like oh I don't care. She was just like she she was like uh um she said like after a lot of drinks. Yeah. You know, right. Exactly. So, so you know, <laughs> it, it seemed well, you know. Listen, I thought that their rapport was really great. Yeah. In general, yeah. you know, just yeah. a huge strength of the movie. And you know, a lot of times you have movies where the room, you know, like the romance is kind of crappy, or it's like let's yeah. just toss this in at the end. It's, like, it's, it's tough to do well. It's tough yeah. to do no, well. This was, Most, the romance yeah. was like very much central to this movie, and they put a lot of effort into it, and like really like, you know, that was. I mean, I would say the romance is even like like you know the heart of the movie. Well, it's a love story. So, yeah. I mean, Valentine's Day movie for real, as it turns out. <laughs> it really was. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it worked. Uh, I mean, I think, even yeah. though I just went on that ten, that ten minute, like sort of like like a uh, militant feminist like tirade right there, I uh, I, I still like you know, 
like I, I, I love the shit out of the movie. Like it was incredible. Well, um, I was really glad, you know, when the movie starts, I was like, how are they going to start this? And they, and they start with, you know, just call me angel over the credits that are all, you know, fake credits that, you know, I thought that yeah. was great. You know, yeah. the, written by the real heroes. Yeah. You know, British villain, <laughs> hot chick, right, right. you know, some, sullen some teenager. Cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A CGI character. So that was all very good. Uh, that, <laughs> um, so that was good, you know, and of course, I think my favorite part of the movie is when he had the fourth wall break inside the fourth wall break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah which is, you know, or another way of talking about that is a flashback in a flashback. Uh, mm. I I once wrote a story with that but nobody read it, whereas everybody saw it. That <laughs> so <laughs> I just like seeing. That. I probably read it. My Did I, read it? I like. I love that kind of stuff. So I was really happy to see it, even though I'm sure a lot of people didn't find it that funny. I think a lot of people still did. Yeah. That's like sixty. That, 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 like that ends That one, one thing that I want to point out. One thing that I want to point out that I really liked was. The, the style of storytelling with the flashbacks, yeah, um, really specifically right. because I think it, it really helped a lot with the pacing of the movie. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that they kind of just gave us Deadpool up front and like had some action and then they did like a little backstory and then they did more action and they had some more backstory, um, that really like broke the movie up in a way that was really good. And yeah. if they had just done it like straightforwardly, in like strict chronological order, I think it would have been a much worse movie. It would have been like, you know, the romance would have been fine, then there would have been like a really boring part in the middle when he has cancer, and then there's the torture scenes, and the whole time we're like, this isn't Daredevil. I mean, De I keep calling him Daredevil. This isn't Deadpool. Where's Deadpool? I want to see Deadpool. It'll be like that, um, <laughs> you know, Ang Lee's The Hulk, when like everyone complains because like The Hulk didn't show up for that whole first hour of the movie. Or yeah. It's like that episode of Poochie on The Simpsons. Yes. Where Homer's like, and when Poochie's not around, everyone should be asking, where's Poochie? Yes. <laughs> exactly <laughs> like that. But instead, and, and also, just... it would have been like, oh, here's another superhero origin story, like the same yep. fucking origin yep. story that we've seen, yeah. you know, 20 times. So they, like, they broke it up. They did it out of order. They, like, you know, showed him, you know, there's present day, there's action. There's, like, weird, you know, fourth wall talking directly to the audience. Yeah. You know, and that and that really, I think, made this movie feel different in a way that, like, if they had done it just chronologically, it, it wouldn't have felt as unique and different from yeah. the rest of the Marvel movies. Well, wasn't it, like, right at the beginning where he said, you know, who expected me to make a movie? I'm not going to tell you which Australian guy right, I had to, right. like, <laughs> suck off to get it. <laughs> yeah. like, it rhymes with... Oh, my God. It rhymes with... Wait, in the end, movie. she takes off his mask and he's wearing a jacket. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that would be a great moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's also great because Hugh Jackman as a man definitely has a sense of humor. No, about, yeah, well, that's, that. that's yeah. true. Um, uh, they, they had two different people magazines of two different sexiest men alive. One with Ryan right. Reynolds and another with Hugh Jackman. Yes, yes. <laughs> did you catch, did you catch the, you know, there were more than one reference. Did you Did you see when they had the reference to, Wolver, you know, X-Men Origins Wolverine, when they had a little figure, they had the little figure that, of the bad Deadpool. Oh, yeah, you turned your tongue yes. around. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I mean, because it was like, oh, nice. And it was just like on for like a second. But it was like, that was a good little shout out there. <laughs> you know, that was, well, uh, you know, that was clever. Well, let me ask a question, actually. I was wondering about this because I, um, I, just when I was looking at Deadpool stuff um, on YouTube, there was just like a, a mix of just like best of Deadpool. And it was from like, um, I think it was from the, the, the cartoon movie uh, Hulk vs. Wolverine. And by the way, uh, he's he's Deadpool's hilarious in it. Like <laughs> it was actually really funny. But like, right. but he kept making he kept he kept like taking digs at Wolverine. Now I, I'm not sure if it was because of that movie and because of the whole like Weapon X thing, or, or is that like a, a thing that happens? Does, does oh, a Deadpool no. specifically pick a Wolverine? That's a thing. Because he also oh, that's has awesome. Because he also has regeneration, you know. So it's sort of right, like, right. But he doesn't have the the skeleton. But he actually regenerates <laughs> faster than Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 that's awesome because like Wolverine's Wolverine's not exactly the comic relief in X Men, but he like sorta has a little bit of that, like slightly. You know what I mean? And he and he like kind of shits on Scott, and he's like kind of like more bad. <laughs> so it's great that Deadpool's like shitting on him and stuff. That's like a, a really good dynamic. Well, I, cause yeah. I, I didn't realize that. I was like, that's a, that's a really good thing to continue. Uh yeah. So I mean, listen. You know, people are already. I mean, you might as well bring up this. 
you can guess, um, pretty soon after the movie came out, they said, I think there's going to be a sequel. Like, in, yeah. like, in, like a week before the movie came out, they're like, I th- yeah, we're, we're announcing Deadpool 2. And then, oh, they announced it before the movie came yeah, out? Yeah, because they were just, like, so confident. But then when the movies, like, really started making money, they're like, okay, yeah, now there definitely will be a Deadpool 2. Not only, not that, only will there be a Deadpool 2, but, but it'll X. have, like, probably double the budget. And not only that, but they're talking, oh, we're going to have an X-Force movie, and it'll be rated R. You know, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, now they're really, like, getting into it. I, I mean, I mean yeah. listen, there's so many ways to interpret this, but, you know, look at it this way. You know, the marketing machine was fantastic. In general, it was just yeah. such an yeah. amazing. You know, yeah. you look at that. The and films were actually funny. Know, yeah, like that's the that's the thing. I mean, Star Wars, yeah. Deadpool. Those are t- you know, those are two amazing marketing campaigns. You know, and one of them. Yeah, really, but, but the one of them Star Wars, Star Wars really just literally injected itself into everything, like, like every car commercial, every pen, my, every peanut yes, butter but my commercial. My point was one of those really needed to sell it, and the other one didn't really. Right. So that's why right. I think the Deadpool one's even more impressive. Uh-huh. Even though the Star Wars one did a great job, I think like yeah. you know you needed to make people like oh hey this looks like fun, you know. Right, right, my right. my favorite um ad my part my favorite part of the marketing campaign was the posters that they made. <laughs> the Valentine's uh, Day one. The yeah the Valentine's Day and it's just like a picture of like Ryan Reynolds and Miranda Bakarin with like a you know kind of like <laughs> the halo. just looks like like they're like sitting in a park <laughs> with like trees in the background and yes. it's yeah. <laughs> true love never dies Valentine's Day. There's a lot yeah. of really good ones. I like the... there's, one, there's one that says, witness the beginning of a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I, like the, um, I like the one he did for Happy Australia Day, <laughs> where he's just like, you know, listen, I just... Uh, oh, that's you know, awesome. He's talking about, like, X-Men, you know, just listen. Oh, just mm-hmm. like, you know, he's like, oh, I don't want to get associated with Wolverine. It's like, nothing <laughs> against you. He's great. It's just... You know, you have to understand that movie was a real low point in my career. And then he like he, he's wearing this crazy hat, and he like he goes like, "What, what is that? What is that?" And he like bats at his hat. He's like, "Oh, it's a hat. You guys wear this?" But just like, and you heard like some crew guys starting to crack up it before they cut it. And I was just like, "Yeah, that's a, that's awesome." Because the thing is, it's amazing how with just a little bit of CGI stuff on the eyes, how expressive he was. Yeah. Just through the mask, it was really impressive. Well, he does he does a lot of stuff with like tilting his head and using like his hands and his arms, you know, yeah, okay. just like, like to sort of convey, you know, what he, you know, even though you can't see his face and they, they did some stuff with his eyes, but, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. a lot of, of just like miming basically. That he and did. Like, when he's, like when he's also quote unquote, when he's quote unquote beating up uh, Colossus oh, and he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I feel yeah. so bad for your wife. <laughs> <laughs> and holding with his baby hand when he has to regenerate it, and like you know, that's, that's, he's like stroking her face. He's like, am I going crazy, or is your hand really small? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so so actually, a part of one one thing I also really liked about the movie too is that. Because they had all this ridiculousness, like with the with the comedy and all that, I think one reason it worked so well is because when they had the the horrific parts and they said like, oh, this is a horror story and all that, like the torture, like that stuff was like really gruesome. They really yeah. went for it. I and think they it also played really it good. So what, it, And they played the cancer stuff. Say? They played that and they played the cancer stuff straight. Yeah. Which right. is like you know right. what? And it's apparently it's already like become like a conversation piece for people talking about dealing with people who have cancer. Because you're sort of like, you know, he, even though he had cancer, he was still like keeping, a, you know, he was still living. Well, that was the whole, well, actually, so so this, this once again, segues nicely into, into like, the, my analysis of it. Because I was like thinking like, all right, why, why did Wade care so much that, that he, that he was physically deformed? I mean, obviously you could say, well, anyone would be, but. But what I'm saying is, I guess what I was, when I was thinking about, it, I was like, you know, what what's what could be surprising about it? Because 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 he's a kind of guy who doesn't give a shit about anything, and Deadpool is kind of like that. And but that's for but like that's kind of the whole thing. It's like what with the deep you could say deep underlying insecurity is in the character and all that. Um, is you know as as we were mentioning before, like it is this presentation because because uh, you know he he and Vanessa are both super traumatized. I mean that's the, that's the whole point. Like they're they're really like fucked up. And and their way of dealing with with the world is like all this insanity. And in fact, 
I re- and when I was thinking about it, I remember there was that point where he says to Vanessa, like, like, because he, he doesn't want her to, he doesn't want her to see him all deformed and fucked up, like, from the cancer. You know, he's like, right. y- you know me as this awesome guy, you, you don't want to see this part of, you know, this right. side of me. Right, right. And, like, they only, they only say it for a second, and that's, that's kind of the genius of it. Because cause, cause later on, I was like, oh, why, why does he care? Because he, he doesn't care about feeling pain or torture or anything like that. Like, he still has a sense of humor. But when he gets, when he actually gets deformed is when he actually cares, you know? And when he's not, like, this person for her and all, and all that. And I think that was kind of the genius of it because it's like, what's behind all that craziness? And, like, and they, so they had, like, a reality of what's behind all that, all, all that, all that craziness and, and, and hilarity, you know, just just making sense out of like you could say the the chaos of life or meaninglessness or or, or horror or cruelty, you know. So I thought I thought that was just super clever, and that also made the movie like you know much more powerful. Yeah, I think that you know you look at something like this, and there's a lot of room for error. There's a lot of places it can go wrong. You know, it can get into camp really easily. I mean, even just look at Mel mm-hmm. Brooks, for example. Yeah. And we were just talking about how he like they broke the fourth wall constantly, and sometimes it didn't work. You know, it was like cheesy. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting how like somehow Deadpool, despite all of like the wackiness, like it never really was campy, right? Yeah. Like it right. was the comedy was like you know serious, like it was comedy. It was like fast paced. It was, but it, at the same time, it like took itself seriously in a way that is like hard to explain but um yeah. but like you know like the violence was serious and like the the threat the menace was serious and like or just like you know like the love story was serious the you know the main motivating drive of the movie which is deadpool's like revenge the revenge was serious so like the yeah. the main core of the movie like it did take seriously and i think that allowed it to avoid letting letting the movie like devolve into like a complete farce you know, and just become like a campy mess. Mm-hmm. Well, I, and I, I think I, I agree with you. And I think part of what they did is that it, it, we were talking about like with the exposition. You know, the the, the storytelling was so genius because it, I think part of what they did was they they slowly peeled. They, they, it's like they slowly like pulled the skin of it apart, like in two directions, so to speak. It's like you slowly look deeper and deeper in. I don't even say layers. It's like it's like you're you're actually looking inside. You know, it, like you know, you're looking deeper and deeper into it because when they when they oh, I think layers does work. When you peel back the layers, you, like you, you see how horrible everything is. So, because like in the beginning, first of all, imagine it was very imagine if like yeah. Star Wars: Revenge of the Sith, you know, had been told in that style, where like you see Darth Vader, and Darth Vader is like kicking people's ass and killing people, and then like you have a flashback to like you know um, Anakin and Padme, and then like you see like another scene, like and it's like you know the present sort of you know with like Darth Vader and the Emperor. And then there's like a flashback, and you see, you know, like it, it, imagine if they had told the story like out of order like that. I think it would have been much better. Yeah, th- well, I think know, one of the difficulties though is that Star Wars is sort of its own subgenre too. They're still kind of confined to certain methods of storytelling. I mean, it's true the Star like... Wars movies have never really done that with like flashbacks, so right. it would they be a little, a little out of character. But, um, yeah. but I think the movie would have been a better movie if they had done that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, they did, and I was just going to mention, like, 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 another thing with the storytelling, too, is that they made, like, kind of speaking your point about, like, villainy and all that, like, his name's Ajax, right? Like, in the beginning, like, he kind of seemed like, it, it was weird to me, because in the, in the beginning, I was like, oh, he's just kind of a minor thug, and there's going to be another bad guy, or whatever, I didn't even know. And they actually yeah. made him more sinister throughout yeah. the movie. That was really clever. That doesn't usually happen, mm-hmm. you know? Like sometimes maybe you meet you meet the villain for a second and you're like oh he's mild mannered then you find out he's really he's really terrible and then then you have to fight against this big force but as right. time goes on you find out that he's worse and worse and worse and worse just kind of mirroring like how horrible you could say like Deadpool's actual life is and how fucked up he is you know it just goes to that core of the horror and, and stuff so I mean it was just it was just brilliant and really. that's that's an interesting and, takeaway and, because I I don't think they really intended that. Um, I think that they, they, cause in the comics, from what I read, I haven't really like seen all these comics, but I was just reading some background about the, you know, after I saw the movie. So apparently like Ajax was involved, you know, in the comics in the process of making Deadpool, but he's not the top guy. There's this other guy who's like this mad scientist, doctor or somebody or whatever, um, that they like were going to have in the movie and then they cut him. They cut, there were like a lot of people that were cut from the movie for budget reasons or other, or whatever. Um, 
So then they ended up with Ajax, who like should be like the number two guy, but he ended up being the number one guy, um, due to due to just like circumstance. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, but it had kind of had this this effect, like what you were describing, about how like at first he just seems like this sort of like thug or whatever you don't really know, and then like you learn that he's like more and more evil than you thought he was, and like more menacing and more scary, um, you know. Than you, than you thought he was, which is, you know, it, it I mean, it's it's just kind of cool the way that these sort of, like, accidental constraints on the movie can can turn into, like, positive mm -hmm. results. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So, overall, awesome movie, well, I would yeah, say. Yeah, let me, let me bring up a little bit of an interesting future point. You know, we talked, you know, at the very end of the movie, they said, okay, by the way, in the sequel, there's going to be Cable. You know, we want yeah, to have, right. uh, you know, Kira, you know, maybe Kira Knightley yeah. as uh, as Cable. Uh, I assume you guys have seen the pictures, right? Yes, I have. What Kira Knightley would look like as Cable, then she saw that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, so you know, I actually kind of would like to see that. So Kira Knightley <laughs> yeah. is interesting. I, I, I think to cast Kira Knightley as Cable. You know what? That would be pretty amazing. It would be. Yeah. It would be awesome. It would be a lot <laughs> of fun. It would be so stupid, but I really. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, they won't do it though, because like, part of the reason that Cable and Deadpool work well together is because Cable is like very serious and like, you know, like a very sort of like humorless character, and so like, Deadpool gets to like play off him. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if they cast yeah. Karen Knightley, it just wouldn't it wouldn't work the same way. Mm. But it would be fun. Well, it, it was a good, it was a good photo. <laughs> it was. It was a good photo. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, I think we had a pretty interesting conversation, you know, talking about what we thought of the movie, some of the ideas, some of the themes. And I yeah. think... Oh, uh, before we finish, um, we should do, like, final thoughts. Yeah, so let's uh, that's just sort of say, like, you know, what are our final thoughts about, you know, Deadpool? Are, do we think they could possibly make a sequel that's good? What do you guys think? Oh, absolutely. I'm. I. I mean, like, I think. I think that they did a great job. I love the movie. Um, it was. It. It definitely met my highest expectations, and um, I think that in the next movie, I'll be looking forward to like, you know, what they're gonna do with Vanessa's character. You know, is she gonna yeah. have like a bigger yeah. role? Is she gonna have mutant powers? You know, what yeah. other characters are we gonna see? Um, and just like, just like develop the world a little more and, and give Deadpool like more fun, crazy stuff to do. So yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean the, 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 the danger is the, uh, the, the danger is the pressure to make it as, you know, especially when you're talking about comedy. I think, I think, I think comedy may be one of the most difficult to make a good sequel out of. I mean, what, like, what has succeeded, I mean, Austin Powers 2 maybe, but what, what, it, what has succeeded, like, like what comedy movies have succeeded with a sequel? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's happened, you know, obviously, but, you know, it's not... It's well, with what? Dark Knight. Comedy. Yeah, just talking about comedy, comedy movies. Oh. Well, I mean, there were, like... Yeah, I'm, I'm saying... There, I'm were, saying, there were a bunch yeah, of, like, like, Naked Gun movies, there were a bunch of Police Academy movies, That's you true. know, there are, like, sure, movies that are, like, okay. sequels, that, that are funny sequels. Okay, I mean, I mean, I, I, I hope... I think it's possible. I think with the, with the way they have the team set up, I mean, it's just... You know, recently, I think there's been a good trend in, in like, the entertainment world, specifically with comedic um, things, and maybe it has to do with the growth of podcasts or just comedy on the internet and all of that, that, that it seems like they're leaving uh, a lot of room for, uh, for comedic teams to do things, like, aka Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty's not the only, not the only place. I mean, I think it's, I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty clear. It, 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 it seems like, 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 um, I don't know. It seems like, I mean, Benji, uh, like when you saw to, when, when you saw Guardians of the Galaxy, right? You were you did you come out of theater and be like, oh, I wonder how they're going to make a sequel. The sequel's you know not going to be good. Like you know, I mean, like you wouldn't. I, I assume that's not the reaction that you would have to, to Guardians of the Galaxy. No, and I know it's not. The, it's also not the reaction I had to Deadpool even because I was like, oh, Deadpool's awesome. Right. Um, it's just now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like. Well, also because Guardians of the Galaxy is kind of like it's. I think it's a much more clear like balance, but like like it's not as rough as Deadpool. I mean, Deadpool is really well done and executed, but it's still more crazy and frenetic. 
like Guardians of the Galaxy was still more like um, I don't I don't mean straightforward like linear, but but it, like it's a more like even blend between comedy and um, and action adventure seriousness and stuff. Like Deadpool is just kind of like crazy. Then they have the serious stuff that they kind of put in there. It's a, it's a, it's a different sort of thing. So I'm just saying also because Deadpool had so much packed into it in terms of the comedy and the you know the hilar- the hilarity of it. Um, that I, I hope they are able to do it. I'm saying is there, there's there's a chance they won't be able to have that punch, but I, I hope they do. I think they're capable. Of it. I mean, listen, it's you never know like if if like a sequel can can recapture you know whatever it was that made the original movie good, and there's uh-huh. always a risk. And like Daredevil, as we I keep saying Daredevil, I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, <laughs> Deadpool, as we as we've been saying, is is a movie that that it takes a lot of risks and, like, has to, like, inherently, because of what it is, like, there, it's a, it would be impossible to make a Deadpool movie that wasn't, like, taking a lot of risks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. can they can they get that right balance? Can they recapture that, you know, that, like, slapstick comedy, you know, combined with, like, gory violence and action and, you know, like, make it work? You know? I hope so. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I hope so. I mean... I kind of wonder if, you know, Dare, you know, uh, geez, you have me doing it. If Deadpool's going to, like, show up, like, just make little cameos here and there in other movies. Oh, because, you know what I doubt doing? it. You I know, don't think that he's going to appear in other movies, no. They have enough time to make an end credit sequence for Age of Apocalypse with Deadpool now. And I don't know if that's such a good idea. I mean, I could, I could see him appearing in an end credit scene, but I don't. I can't imagine Deadpool like having a cameo in like a mainline like in the movie itself of like yeah. X Men or or whatever movie. Well, it's not be a good idea. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen though. Uh huh. Hmm, I suppose. Uh, all right, I think I think that all about does it for now. You know. You, you know, would be awesome if you just if he was just like in a crowd scene. Oh. Like. Oh, I see. In, okay. in like X Men Apocalypse, if there was like a crowd, but it, like imagine like a crowd of just like normal looking, normally dressed people, and then yeah. just like Deadpool is like standing right in the middle, just like standing there with everyone, and the ca- camera just kind of like pans over him and just like doesn't even pause. Okay, that's fine. yeah, right? yeah, that that could work. That, that would be awesome. Work. That's cool. <laughs> That's definitely cool. I don't think it's gonna happen. Well, I guess we'll see, because <laughs> Age of Apocalypse is coming out soon. Yeah, and there's gonna be dead like the, the final scene with Apocalypse. Deadpool's just gonna show up like, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, well, maybe we like, all right. So I don't actually know how it's gonna end. But let's say the, the final scene, Apocalypse dies. Deadpool shows up and says, "Hey guys, what I miss?" You know. <laughs> or or Deadpool shows up and just shoots him in the head. Oh, uh, <laughs> even better. He's like, man. Oh, Why did right. you guys do this the whole time? It's just... it's like, we, we could do that? I didn't know we could do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I supposed to save him for you guys? <laughs> yeah, but that's not going to happen. So, yeah. all right. I think, I think we're going to wrap it up. All right. uh, this was fun. And uh, nerd you later, guys. All right. Nerd you later. Nerd you later.